Today we're going to be looking at another one of Kurt's Gazat's videos. Specifically, is our world broken? This is not fine. Well, if you design your cubicles with no fire escape routes, then that probably doesn't bode well. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's see what this is all about. A human in the 21st century often feels frustrating. We're clearly at the high point of our species. Never have so many of us lived so well, been so healthy and well off. At the same time, life is incredibly hard. More than 15,000 children died yesterday. 700 million people live in extreme poverty. Even within rich societies, there's loads of unfairness and daily struggle. We are divided, unable to solve our problems while creating new ones, destroying our world in the process. Okay, um, I think they're clearly getting at a lot of the naysayers here, but the mentioning of us destroying our planet, no. So the Earth has been around for billions of years, it's a very resilient system. We don't have the technology to do permanent damage to it, at least not yet, even if we detonated all of our nuclear weapons. Now unchecked pollution is harming ecosystems and could damage human infrastructure that could reduce the overall quality of life if we are not careful and we don't plan things appropriately, we don't invest in appropriate technologies like advanced nuclear power generation to replace things like fossil fuels. But even that is an oversimplification. In many ways, the vibe is that we live in dark times. It's so easy to feel disconnected and powerless in the face of problems. Showed that image, maybe don't scroll Twitter or X or whatever you call it in the middle of the night, that might make you feel better. It's <laughs> too big to solve. And so the state of the world fills many of us with doom, hopelessness, and sadness. We feel it too. It's one of the most pervasive stories of our time, and there's a lot of truth to it. Now one thing I'm curious about is, is it any worse than it has been? I guess just because a lot of this information is more accessible and there's a lot of questionable sources out there, that it's a lot more in your face about us being more divided that we're used to. I can see that if your mind continues to digest stuff that makes you not feel good or you don't necessarily know which source of information to believe. Yeah, I could see some people falling into this problem. But as Terry Pratchett said, we are the storytelling ape. We think in narratives and live in a network of stories oh, that cool. make up our world. So without minimizing the darkness, we want to add a story that we find helpful for dealing with the world. This is subjective and not a science video, so you don't need to buy into it. <laughs> I appreciate the disclaimer, but I'm gonna throw some science and engineering in there. Our story begins with the first moment that ever was. 14 billion years ago, time and space began from okay. some kind of state of pure energy. From this very pure energy. A lot of people throw around that term. Literally what pure energy means though is it has no mass. It's just energy E equals MC squared. Electromagnetic radiation or just light is an example of pure energy and I'm talking the full spectrum not just what you can see with your eyes. In contrast to say potential or kinetic energy which can exist independent of mass but they typically involve movement or configuration of matter. And matter can be converted into pure energy. That's what happens with the matter-antimatter reaction. They are annihilated and pure energy is released. This commonly happens between an electron and a positron in a process known as pair production. First moment, the universe grew and evolved. Things that were one became many. Energy turned into forces and particles. Out of chaos emerged the laws of nature. And yes, the forces were thought to have been unified for a very brief moment in time. Forces of gravity, electromagnetism, strong nuclear and weak nuclear. But this wasn't very long, on the order of 10 to the minus 43 seconds after the Big Bang which was really, really fast, even for nuclear reaction speed. From these ingredients, stars arose, gigantic engines turning simple stuff into complex stuff Fusion only reactors. to die violently and spread the new complexity around. Out of this more complex stuff, new stars and more worlds emerged, repeating the cycle until most of the simple stuff was used up and most stars that will ever be born had been born. And then, on one planet where the conditions were just right, dead particles and molecules combined to make another jump in complexity. Make 
I like this pretty quick overview. Maybe the laws that govern everything were destined to make life happen. Maybe it was just a cosmic dice throw. But life, now the most complex thing in existence, wasted no time and spread to even the tiniest corners. For billions of years, cells held on, fighting against the elements and each other, evolving in the process, until one day they came together and made another jump in complexity to plants, animals and fungi. First in the oceans, then on the land. Earth was now the stage of something grand, a complexity acceleration machine going at full speed. Millions of new species emerged and vanished. Life was beaten down over and over, but every time it came back stronger, resettling niches filled with corpses of the ones that came before. Most of these beings are hidden in- Mention all the times that life has reset, that the Earth went through a lot of history of life forms being reset. So that whole argument about destroying the Earth doesn't really matter. Even if we do wipe ourselves out, uh, we're not destroying the Earth. Time forever, we only know their faint echoes. Until a few million years ago, an animal looked at the night sky. It looked at its hands. It saw its reflection in a puddle, and it realized it existed, that it was alive, <laughs> here and now. You probably had such a moment as a small child, mundane and majestic at the same time. This is where the human story begins, about six million years ago with the hominids. Still just another animal among many others. They split into many families and lineages evolving further or disappearing again. But for some reason, their evolutionary niche enabled their cool. brains to grow and they learned more about this strange world. They prayed to the stars, they tamed fire and turned stones into tools. They celebrated and cried together. Life was hard and brutally short, but together they endured, probably by telling themselves stories about the world. For almost 250,000 generations, they built a biological foundation. And then at some point 200,000 years or about 10,000 generations ago, hmm. they became us. It's always fascinating to see just how long each of these steps took, like single cells for billions of years, primitive humans for millions, and now you're, we're just thinking about how much things changed on the order of a few months to years. Humanity had arrived. Our ancestors didn't waste any time. Their world was still hard and unforgiving, but out of pure stubbornness, they didn't accept that. They wanted their lives to be better, so they made better tools and learned to preserve their knowledge beyond death. Progress started slow, and then suddenly they, or better, we, made the planet our own. Agriculture and the first villages and temples snowballed into civilization. Kingdoms and empires, technology, writing, astronomy, medicine, philosophy. A hot second later, science, industrialization, the modern world, the information age where we are today. Earth is truly ours now. We changed it in ways unfathomable a few short generations ago. We turned the land into fields worked by millions of machines, built thousands of gigantic jungles made of sand and metal. This is a cool story. We split like the atom that. and traveled to other worlds. Everything. everything is different today. Except us, of course. We humans have not yep. changed. We were molded by a cold and unforgiving world where we needed to be hard and- There's a quote out there, I forget who said it, but we have godlike technology, but medieval institutions and primitive emotions or something like that. I think that fits. Brutal to survive. We are still bound to our nature that made us so successful. We still tell stories, are hungry for food, greedy for resources, desperate to be accepted by our peers. Mm. We're scared by the dangers that lurk in the dark, imagined and real ones. We're still brutal. I like that, the imagined one. That definitely strikes a point home with, uh, with nuclear power because a lot of people just don't understand it and that's why people fear it, even though it's safe and cuddly like a cat. Not that I recommend cuddling fuel assemblies. To each other and the animals we hold power over. We're still territorial and possessive. We fear losing <laughs> what we have and we fear change. We downplay the damage we cause and ignore the people in need outside our tribes. Humans are not nice, and if we look at our history, how could we expect ourselves to be? In nature we see That's great beauty, but also endless violence and struggle, devoid of morals or kindness. 
We are an instinct-driven apex predator that survived in an uncaring world. Only now we have coal plants, nuclear weapons, and social media. I like the implication that social media is more pollutant than coal plants and more destructive than nuclear weapons. Which is interesting because coal plants are responsible for hundreds of thousands of deaths per year from the pollution, which is actually more than nuclear weapons, which was about 300,000 deaths total, plus leftover exposure events from nuclear weapons testing. Still a lot, but not as many recurring deaths as coal plants. But social media, that one's difficult to quantify, but it definitely has more of an impact that could be potentially adverse in terms of causing mental health issues. This video already talked about the increased anxiety and also the misinformation that could result into um, harmful acts. I don't know if there's much data out there involving deaths, and it would be very difficult to ascribe direct deaths to social media. Just like it can be kind of challenging to decide which increased cancer rates are specifically due to Chernobyl decades after the event. It can be really challenging to fingerprint. Really, and even and much harder than the Chernobyl case for, for social media, just because it's so hard to fingerprint stuff like that. Note that I'm not saying social media is bad. That would be quite hypocritical <laughs> of me. But with social media, it could do things like set time limits, filter out people that, that cause uh, triggering negative emotions for you, which I recognize that could be challenging because it involves a fair bit of self-awareness. But... I found it interesting that Kurtz Gazat made that comparison. This would be hard to handle for any animal, so it makes sense that we continue to follow the impulses so deeply ingrained in us. But this is only Those because we've fears. not yet caught up with the mind-numbing gift we've been handed. The real tragedy of humanity today is that we are these amazingly powerful beings that have not awoken to their potential. We're trapped in the present and the mindset of a scarce world. But aside from the physical limits of the universe, that's true. A couple of hundred years ago, you probably would have been sent to prison or worse for claiming that one little device in your hand can give you access to the entirety of human knowledge. There's nothing stopping us from creating a literal paradise for ourselves. This seems so daft, but it's true. If we dare to tell ourselves a yep. different story about who we are and who we could be, Humans throughout history felt an abundance mindset over a scarcity mindset. It's easier said than done because it would involve in undoing quite a bit of hardwiring, programming, and evolution. And I'm not just talking the biological aspect. It's reinforced so much how scarce everything is. And I'm not going to deny that some resources are scarce, but it would take a mindset shift. It's kind of hard to say. To get us to truly advance as a civilization from a, eventually from a limited resource one to what could be considered a cornucopia type civilization. I've heard that in a few uh, futurist groups. Though that would probably involve expanding our civilization to other planets, which we need a lot more energy, which nuclear power can help us get there. Like they would witness the apocalypse, and this feels especially true today, but you're probably not living in the end times. There's a solid <laughs> chance not. that humanity will... I mean, there is technically a small chance that Earth and large chunks of matter could fizzle out through things like quantum tunneling or false vacuum decay. That's the topic for another video. ...exist for thousands, maybe millions of years. If this might be the very start of our history, what can we dream of achieving? Just like how... I mean, if you think about it, considering how long human life forms have existed before, no real reason to believe we're not at the beginning. Very first ancestors six million years ago, we may be the ancestors of another 250,000 generations of people. But while the... Hom people that can levitate, obviously. <laughs> ...found themselves powerless in a world they had to adapt to, our starting conditions could not be more different. It's like we got handed a save file of a game where others put in millions of hours of work and where we can decide what game we want to play in the future. <laughs> That's awesome. Reminds me of that quote, if I have seen farther, it's because I was standing on the shoulders of giants. Probably one of my favorite Newton quotes. The world is still horrible, and it's also the best world that's ever existed. And we can make it so much better.
an optimistic person living in the year 1924 would not believe the progress we've made in just a century. Oh, sure. How much we reduced poverty, how many diseases we cured, how much free time we have, what kind of luxuries are ordinary to us, what technological wonders we take for granted, how few of us die in war, how many live in a democracy. That's, that's true, and you could say what you will about today's democracies, but yeah, compared to 1924 though. And today, we might very well be gearing up for a jump like our ancestors 10,000 years ago. I wonder what things we're going to see in 2124, for that matter. Agriculture changed everything for everybody. From AI possibly transforming the information age, to biotechnology enabling us to manipulate the language of life itself, to new sustainable ways of harvesting the energy we crave. And again, we can do, we can sustain the energy we crave with nuclear power, and it's, none of it's really new technology. We can incorporate new technology, but just to get us started. It's not a technology challenge, it's a socio-political challenge, and a bit of an economic challenge, but the bigger one's socio-political. If we start thinking in decades and centuries, it's perfectly reasonable that we'll solve our problems. We can eliminate poverty, maybe all material needs. On the thing of eliminating poverty, I think it's more of... We've redefined, at least in industrialized civilizations, I mean, there's still abject poverty out there, but what the poverty line actually is. That is to say, you can be in poverty now, but if you're at the high end, like just under the poverty line, probably less poor than you were 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago, that sort of thing. Fetal diseases, maybe even death itself. We have the potential to restore balance to the climate and heal the planet again we may be able to adapt to the information age and make lasting peace. None of this is guaranteed and it will be hard and full of failure and The lasting peace, one, I don't know about that one being a technology thing by itself. That, I think, might get more into our human monkey brain, monkey emotion hard coding. Facts, some things will get worse before they get better. We'll Creative run up against our nature over and over again. But if we manage to clean up our act, we could create a world better than we dare hope for. And again, I think the biggest argument for this is stuff that we've already done. Main examples like nuclear power, safe, clean, sustainable, advanced water purification, desalination, sustainable farming. So all of our basic needs, food, water, energy can be met compared to they were 100 years ago. Medical advances, MRIs, CTs, even just vaccines were significantly better than they were 100 years ago and everything becoming more autonomous with AI, there's going to be some creative destruction going on with that, just like there was in the previous Industrial Revolutions, but I'm always cautiously optimistic. You get to do that. You get to live in a world that's deeply flawed, but also the best it ever was. And you get the opportunity to make it better. A world with the smallest amount of suffering possible that fits our nature and inspires us to be the best version of ourselves. I like this video. I like how inspirational and optimistic Kurtz Gazette can be. Yes, this one was very high level and there are a lot of simplifications, but every now and then it's good to have some feel-good social media compared to the ones that are always more negative or too much unproductive finger pointing. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.